Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this video is going to be just some in-depth uh, information and settings for Rekordbox and uh, your USB drive and uh, CDJ settings. Uh, it, it's some of these things are going to, going to be really helpful in uh, your usage on uh, CDJs, uh, where you can load uh, settings right on the CDJ from your USB by hitting, hitting the menu key uh, right when you plug it in. Uh, so you can have like automatically turn quantize on, auto enable auto hot queue, uh, set various other settings like uh, just like locking the needle search if that kind of fucks you up sometimes, or you know, or setting vinyl mode on on the jog wheel, things like that. Just generally useful settings that uh, I've learned over time and from other DJs, uh, but that I never really see videos for or people talking about too often, just because you know it's just kind of you know word of mouth kind of shit. Uh, so, uh, here we go. Oh, uh, addendum from last video. I was able to fix the uh, Q-Sync uh, issue I had uh, for a couple other songs. Um, it was just a database uh, error in uh, Record Buddy. I, was, I just reset the database by holding uh, Alt slash Option uh, when launching uh, Record Buddy, and it just uh, resets the database. I just do a full sync, and it fixed it. Uh, as you can see, like I have uh, you know, uh, cue points on some of the songs that did not uh, in the previous video. Uh, so uh, let's get right right down to it. Um, let me clap some of these down. Uh, my USB drive I have named R2 because I have I generally carry around uh, at least two USB devices with me when I'm uh, playing, so that if one corrupts or if one just doesn't want to work for some reason. Uh, it, I have a backup, at, at least one backup. Um, you can do you know four or five, however many you, you want to spend much you know spend money on. Uh, one thing I always recommend uh, when removing uh, your USB from a CDJ is using the USB stop uh, button, holding that down until that USB drive is dismounted to pull out. Because if you just go pulling it out willy nilly, it just, that can just make your drive go crap. I've seen it happen after like somebody did a fresh export on a drive, they put in a CDJ, they didn't hit that USB stop, they pulled it right out, they tried to put it into another CDJ, and it was done. They had to do a full-blown format and re-export from Rekordbox. It's wasted so much time for them. Uh, so just be careful on that. So uh, getting to the settings, uh, first we're gonna go into record box, uh, like the record box preferences. Um, you're gonna go to the the my settings tab uh, first. Uh, these are these are my settings. These are ones that I personally prefer. Uh, you can change them to however you you like. Um, so I kind of do a mini explanation as best as I can for some of these. Uh, so like uh, play mode single instead of continuous. Uh, so that when one song is done playing on a deck, it just stops instead of going to the next song in the folder or playlist. Because um, that can kind of fuck you up sometimes. You're just like, ah, what's going on? And if you drink a little too much or something. Um, if you're playing on an actual CDJ, not an XDJ, uh, leaving the eject load lock unlocked so you can pop out uh, CDs in and out if you're using CDs. Uh, makes things quite a bit easier. Um, me personally, I have, I, I sometimes my fingers kind of go go wonky and I hit the needle search and it just fucks me up. Uh, most of the time it's when I'm when I'm pre queuing so it doesn't doesn't fuck me up too bad. But uh, I always have the I set the needle lock to be locked so that if I tap it on the screen or on the the bar, it doesn't do anything. Um, it, it's just something I've I've found to be fairly useful for me. Uh, if you're not as uh, clumsy or sloppy with your fingers as I am, go ahead and set it to, to unlocked and go from there. Um, I like having quantize turned on uh, just for because I set a lot of loops uh, for bringing songs in and out. Um, and having it be on beat is very important uh, to me and very important to sound in general. Uh, being off beat just sounds really bad. Uh, setting it to one beat is what I use. Uh, you can set it to half beat or whatever, whatever you prefer, uh, whatever works for you. It's kind of a personal choice on there. Um, you all you want hot cue auto load on, uh, so that when you load in a song, 
it's you're going to have your hot cues there because uh, if you don't have that on you have to manually like, tell it to load your hot cues after you load in the song it takes a little bit more time um, you can also make your song loading take a little bit longer but you know, if you're you know, doing things right uh, it's not really that big of a detriment um, the hot cue color, uh, I like that. I could be just because it gives me better visual distinction uh, at a glance. It's kind of one of my big things is at a glance. Uh, you know, the auto auto cue level. Yeah, I don't. I've never really. This is the default setting. I've never really used tried it to be anything different than this. But eh, whatever, it works. Uh, the slip flashing. It's kind of helpful because like if you accidentally hit slip mode. Um, some people like slip mode, some don't. Uh, it's kind of dynamic on how you use it. Uh, just it just flashes some of the lights on the deck uh, when you enable it. And if you have this setting off, it won't. And you'll, you'll never know until you're like you're you know hitting the jog for something, and it's just you know slip mode. Uh, on air, uh, the on air lights are the like on CDJ 2000s are the little LEDs on the jog wheel ring, uh, and that will you know. Sorry, white, blue, red, and blinking. Uh, you can turn that on or off here. Uh, jog brightness, I always have that on bright because so it's just nice looking. Uh, jog indicator, you know, it's nice. Uh, if you have a disk drive, having it having this on bright is, you know, kind of helpful in a dark club. Um, if you have it off, you're, you might just be fumbling your CDs and be like, what are you doing? Uh, you know, ink. I speak English, I don't really speak any other languages, there you go. Uh, LCD brightness, I have it at 3, that's typically bright enough uh, for pretty much every environment I've spun in, including in uh, daylight. Uh, time mode, I like time mode being remaining instead of elapsed so that I can kind of count down better. Uh, it's another personal choice. Um, auto queue, uh, this will automatically load uh, your uh, memory queues and uh, your song properly so that you can just and also set your uh, your cue button to be on that first beat uh, of the song it's it's just a handy a super handy setting um, jog mode I always have it on vinyl because vinyl mode just feels better uh, CDJ mode is just kind of weird to me uh, it doesn't feel natural in how it uh, search like scrubs through songs uh, tempo range I always have mine plus or minus 10% uh, sometimes I'll go up to 16 uh, just f for some in key but wider range BPM offsets. Uh, it's just uh, anything above 10% more often than not just sounds too fast uh, from the original song. Uh, if you really just kind of listen to kind of go through some of your songs and go you know go all the way up to 10%, it just sounds unnatural for the song if you know the song. People might not notice, but you'll notice and you'll be like, brrr. Um, master tempo, that's key lock. Uh, it makes it makes it so that when you adjust your pitch fader up and down, uh, you don't get the sounding stuff that just, just kind of just sounds terrible when you're uh, like pitching up and down or if you're using the jog to uh, beat match. It doesn't give you that, that, that those funky uh, warbling sounds. Quantize on. I like quantize because, you know, again, the loops and stuff. Um, I don't use sync. I never use sync. I always beat match by hand or by ear, uh, sometimes by the phase meter. Um, on Nexus 2 line, including XDJ 1000s and I, like definitely 1000 Mark 2s, but I'm not sure about uh, 1000 Mark 1s uh, for the XDJ line. Uh, they have the phase meter type 2. Which instead of the moving squares, it's actual uh, moving uh, beat lines or uh, bar lines, uh, so that you can kind of fine tune your beat matching a bit better uh, with with a visual cue. Um, it's kind of a crutch, but you know when you're on that like one sixteenth off beat uh, on beat matching, uh, you can kind of see it. Uh, you might be able to hear it, but you're kind of too nervous to nudge the the jog too much, um, it'll you know to kind of give you that indication where you're at. Um, I prepare mine for just you know the the wide range of stuff. Um, I have my 
column uh, when you're scrolling through songs on screen I have the BPM column set uh, instead of key or uh, any of the other things because it's generally the most the more useful one uh, you don't really need to do key uh, because if you have all your key, <coughs> key information set uh, properly like with uh, using mixed in key and importing everything properly like I showed you in the last video um, there will be the the icon next to the BPM when scrolling will be green, I believe. I'm colorblind, so it might be like a greenish yellow or something like that. But it'll be different than white. It won't say BPM as matching. It'll be, it'll, it'll switch over to that green icon. It'll have uh, a, a flat sign and a sharp sign. And you, and that basically is telling you that it's a matching key or a close key. Uh, usually, you know, plus or minus uh, one or two on the Camelot scale. Um, I have uh, mine set for uh, like the active sort options if I want to sort stuff uh, when scrolling through uh, to just artist album BPM key genre and rating. Uh, I haven't really gotten into rating too much uh, anymore. Um, I'm going to actually go from rating to using color uh, here uh, because um, basically I got the idea uh, from somewhere I don't remember. Uh, of like marking songs I've played in sets uh, this year already with like a red and then setting songs that I haven't played yet as a blue or just leaving a blank so that uh, when I'm scrolling through say my entire trance uh, folder which is literally just all of my trance songs I can at a glance see which songs I have played in a set before because yeah, sometimes you you you, ha you have these bangers you really want to play, but you know if you're playing you know if you're half your set are those bangers that you play every single time, you know it's just gonna be repetitious to you. You're gonna get bored of it. Uh, you know your your crowd might get bored of it because they've heard this you know half of this mix already. Uh, despite you know you're probably never gonna mix the same song the same way twice every single fucking time with the same songs. Uh, if you do, switch it up, bro. Um, categories. I some of these are the default. I have you know the artist album key BPM genre. Uh, I added playlists. You know, I have since I use a lot of playlists for my sets. Um, have that in there is very useful. Instead of having to scroll through everything on my drive and just go to that playlist, I have twenty songs in there instead of going through and have a thousand songs. Uh, it's just super handy to have uh, these ones here. Um, I have the waveform color set to RGB so I can see when I'm fading out uh, mids or highs or lows. Uh, I have the full waveform uh, table view on screen uh, so I can zoom in and out uh, to kind of uh, predict where I should bring in a song or fade out a song, uh, filter cut, you know, whatever. Um, so I can easily see where to start mixing out or in, oh, or in both actually. Um, so these are just you know other things. Um, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, uh, these are like in record box settings. Um, one of the cool things that seems a lot of people don't really know is that uh, for uh, DJM 900 Nexus and the Nexus 2, not sure about uh, just the 900, uh, you can do uh, uncompressed, uh, unaltered. Uh, Audio out via the USB port on there directly to into Record Box. Um, so I have a Nexus 2 here. Uh, I'll turn this on and set the USB 910 to the mix record out. Set that there and in Record Box. Um, You just I have the, the recording here, and it will when I actually have a song playing. Uh, you can see the levels here going, and you just hit record. You can record up to three hours at a time, and it'll be a wave file. You can add metadata to it, um, do what you really you know really want to it. Uh, it does nor you can tell it to normalize the volume or not. As uh, saw here, I don't have that. Uh, I have it to automatically record once uh, once 
sound starts going, and uh, if it's silent for 20 seconds, to stop. Um, like I have the auto optimize audio level turned off because I will. The, the, the normalizing is okay, uh, but I'll run everything through uh, Platinum note, Notes first. Uh, you don't have to do that. It can leave it at the normal uh, normalization level uh, in record box. It's fine, typically fine. Um, automatically import the record file so you can listen to it later. Um, recording, like listening to your recordings, especially as like a newer DJ, is very important for the learning process. Like where you fucked up. Uh, learning beat matching, like hearing, you know, some of the offness of bad beat matching, even if it's you know one eighth, one sixteenth, or just barely off. Um, let's see. Yeah, these are some other uh, other ones. Yeah, browsing. Uh, yeah, these are some of the settings I just don't really use. Um, you can sync stuff up to Kuvo for like play counts and everything, but yeah, I haven't found a really good use for it. Um, you can also access a lot of the settings here from the USB menu uh, right here. You've got your categories, your sort, your column, your color. I like to have different colors for each uh, drive um, so that I know which one is which. Uh, it's just I, I like at a glance things like oh that's the red drive that's the blue drive that's the pink drive etc etc um, yeah I think that's kind of it for going a little bit more in depth into uh, record box settings in uh, USB um, the sync manager is just extremely handy uh, if you prefer to build your playlists in iTunes for some reason well, you can do that um, like you can see I use a ton uh, in record box uh, whether it's for you know a friend for a gig for a concept uh, or it's just all a bunch of different genres uh, mashed in one as a smart playlist uh, like this one so you have a few different genres to find, and it matches any of them, and it has any of them in there. Uh, and then same for drum and bass. Uh, these these lists get dynamically updated as you add music to your collection, so you don't have to go through. Uh, and when you open up Sync Manager, if you have uh, these set to sync on your device. You just you know do this and that, and it'll automatically export any new songs and remove any old songs. Um, thankfully, Rekordbox will ask you if you want to uh, re remove any songs on, off the USB first, um, at least the first time uh, you do it, and uh, to free up space. And if it's you know out of your collection, it's out of your collection. Uh, one of the cool things uh, that Record Box 5 brought to the mix uh, uh, was uh, being able to plug in somebody else's uh, exported USB and uh, being able to basically read their database off the drive and either import directly from the drive, including all the cue points and details. Uh, into your own collection, or if you're using uh, Record Box to uh, perform with, like with a controller, or using HID mode or MIDI mode uh, with Club Gear for some reason, um, you can do that. Um, and it's a new feature, it's been a long awaited feature, it's very nice. Because uh, I believe before uh, it just wouldn't do it. Um, let's see, I just popped in a USB uh, to one of my CDJs, the, I loaded the red drive. So let's dump here, uh, let's drop here, and it's something out of the test playlist from the previous video. Uh, let's do that. So keep an eye on the uh, master out there. Let's see, let's turn this up. You can see that 
there. And if I hit record, it'll go. And from there, you can just record all day. Uh, it'll you can tell it to automatically split and keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going. Um, you, you still have to lug your your laptop around. I'd highly recommend getting a digital audio recorder uh, of any sort because the the back of most mixers will have an RCA out. You can just RCA to TRS or XLR or whatever. Um, hmm. I think I've covered a lot of ground. Um, if you have any questions again, uh, I'm more than happy to answer. Uh, I need to update uh, my videos with my Twitter information and all that jazz. But yeah, hit me up, uh, throw a comment or question, you know, whatever. Thanks.